The objective of this problem is to solve differential equations with uh, nonlinear programming, okay, or to convert the differential equations into algebraic equations so that they can be solved with um, a uh, standard algebraic equation solvers or an optimization. We would do uh, nonlinear programming, meaning that we would want to minimize uh, function f of x subject to. Uh, we're going to have uh, differential equations, so we're going to have. Um, let's say we have dx dt and then x okay uh, equals zero so maybe we have that we're going to convert this into a form that can be solved by nonlinear programming solvers so same objective function it's just that we're translating this into um, uh, I'll put a prime there into just algebraic equations so we've taken the differential term and related it in terms of the uh, the state variables um, in the horizon. Okay, so let's look at our problem now. Uh, we want to solve this set of differential equations with a method that's called orthogonal collocation on finite elements. It's also called direct transcription in the literature, but it's the same thing. Okay, we want to solve the two coupled differential equations. Here are our differential equations from time starting at zero until a final time of 10. All right, so those are our uh, initial and, and final time points. We want to solve the system of equations with orthogonal collocation on finite elements with four nodes. These are the time points, and they're given at 0, uh, 5 minus square root of 5, 5 plus square root of 5, and 10. Okay, so these are uh, given from uh, the orthogonal uh, the orthogonal elements of our, our collocation, those are prescribed as from the Legendre polynomials. Okay, so this is for the discretization points. All right, and uh, we have these initial conditions. We're also going to show when this is 1, that that gives us an infeasible uh, solution. Okay, but these are the initial conditions uh, and the two differential equations. Okay, so the, these are the initial conditions. Um, the value of the input u is uh, 0.5, and then the following is available for the approximation of the derivative values. Okay, so this is the orthogonal collocation uh, method where we're going to relate our differential equations to just purely algebraic equations, and then solve those as separate equations in our in our problem. Okay, so if you just select this link. Um, this one's going to take you to an article on nonlinear modeling and estimation of predictive control on AP Monitor. And if you scroll down, you'll see information on orthogonal collocation. Okay, so, um, all right, so we want to report the solution of x1 and x2 and uh, the derivative values at uh, these points. Okay, and, and uh, there's going to be, there are going to be 12 variables and 12 equations to this. So let's just look at a diagram of this we have our fixed initial conditions okay this should this was one uh, you know, it could be one or uh, zero in this case it's going to be zero and then we have uh, the future time points so for every one of these these are all going to be unknowns we're going to have unknown derivative values we're going to have unknown state variables okay so we have 12 things that I've circled there Okay, 12 unknowns, and uh, we just need to come up with uh, 12 equations. Okay, so um, let's go back to our problem statement then. We have um, these, these differential equations. Okay, so we're going to have, uh, we need to satisfy those two differential equations at every time point. Okay, so I'm going to say these are equations 1 and 2. Okay, so the equations 1 and 2. And then we also need to satisfy um, this equation 3 at every, uh, for each variable as well. Okay, so we're, we're going to satisfy this matrix or these three equations uh, to get our differential values um, as well. So we have um, equation 1 and 2, equation 1 and 2, and equation 1 and 2, and then for these three we'll have equation 3, and for these three we're going to have equation 3 as well.
Okay, so there are, um, so that gives us the 12, uh, that's going to give us the 12 equations. So let's go ahead and set this up and, and solve it. We'll solve it two different ways. One with, uh, you know, just writing out all of these equations. And then another way, um, we'll just uh, set it up in AP Monitor and just compare the two solutions. Okay, so we have uh, the first way of solving this um, is just going to be writing out all of these equations. So we have final time of 10. We have some parameters, which are going to be the initial conditions. And I'm going to write the indices here, um, where it's going to be x, and then the first index um, right here is going to be the variable number. And then the second index is going to be the time in the horizon. So I'm going to put my initial condition for variable 1 equal to negative 0.5, and my initial condition for variable 2 equal to 0. Okay, and then I also have my u value. That was another uh, parameter, a constant in the, in the equations. And I have some variables now. Okay, so I have variable 1 and, uh, one and 2 going from uh, time point 1 to time point 3. Okay, so I put the, um, the colon here uh, for the first index, and then the second one uh, for the second index. Okay, so, so th what this does is it creates a matrix, a uh, two-row, three-column matrix of x. Okay, so I'm going to have values of x, uh, one uh, bracket, and then, uh, you know, one, and then one, two, one, three. Um, and, and so on. Okay, so that's going to be, uh, you know, just classifying a, a matrix of x values. I'm also going to have my derivative values. Okay, so I have six values here and six values there as well. Okay, let's go back to the, um, the diagram here so we can just see both of them at the same time. Okay, so I have the derivative of variable 1 at time point 1. Okay, and then we're going to have the derivative of variable 1 and then it's going to be it'll give you a two there as well, and then three. So we're going to have the derivative values um, at all the different time points. Okay, so now um, let's do the equations, um, and I'm going to make this just a little bit uh, larger here. So this is the matrix uh, just written out. Okay, all of these, um, all of the this this matrix, I basically just multiplied it out and written the three equations for uh, variable one. And then we have the, the three equations for variable uh, two as well. Okay, I could have put um, you know this just going from one to two, and so everywhere you see one, you could have the one to two there as well. Okay. Um, all right. So now we have our two. Um, I'm going to write this out. This is our first differential equation. So let's go back up here. Okay, so we're going to write these two right here now. Um, and so we have uh, dx1 uh, dt equals u. Okay, so I'm going to do that for all of the different time points. Okay, and then also this is the, this is the derivative of variable 2. Um, that's going to be x1 squared minus u. Okay, so I've written those out uh, as well. Okay, and so that... Um, that is my model. All right, so let's go ahead and solve this. I'm just going to plug this in to the online interface. Okay, you can select the uh, try it online and then just come here and select whatever model um, was there. Okay, so just do select all and then delete it and then paste in uh, this model. And then uh, on the, just select the optimize. Um, you can also do uh, simulate, uh, they'll give you the same answer because you don't have an objective function there. Okay, so it's going to solve it and then uh, we have all of our values. Let's just focus on this, um, these last values. So x1, 3, so the very final time point, that's going to be equal to 4.5. Okay, so let's just, uh, for comparison, we'll come back over here and um, here it says that, okay, I'll erase this. All right, so this said it's going to get to a value of 4.5.
All right, and then let's get uh, the value here just at the end for x2 comma 3 as well. If I come back over, uh, that's going to be 55.88. Um, All right, just rounding off there, 55.88. All right, so let's, um, let's set this up um, just one other way as well. This is going to be with the AP Monitor modeling language. Um, and really what the, the advantage of doing it this way is you don't have to write the collocation equations yourself, um, but you can. Okay, so we have parameters. We have u is uh, 0.5. Okay, so let's come back over to the model just so we can see this um, as well. So now we're just going to write uh, these equations and let AP Monitor do the collocation for us. So we have variables. Um, we have our initial condition for x1 is negative 0.5, x2 initial condition is going to be 0, and then we have some equations. Um, we have the dollar sign, that's a, a derivative of x1 is going to be equal to u, and then we have the derivative of x2 is x1 squared minus u. Okay, I'm going to just create in here <coughs> my uh, time horizon, so I'm going to do a uh, asterisk dot csv, it's going to just name the same, um, you know, it's going to name it the same way as uh, as uh, the model file name, if you put the asterisk there, and then I have a time 0 to 10. Okay, and then I'm going to do end file. So I'm just going to create a new CSV file when it runs. And then I have another thing which is overrides.dbs. That's just a, um, a, a database uh, file that is going to include some of the options. And so I'm going to change the NLCI mode to 4 and the number of nodes to 4 as well. And then end file. Okay, so that's, uh, that's how you change some of the overrides. Um, this is how you do your data file. Right here, you can put a CSV file in there, and then those are the equations. Okay, so I'm going to, um, okay, so I've got all this. I'll go ahead and select this now, and then come back over to the online interface, and just replace, um, Okay, replace it with this now, and then now I'm going to choose Dynamic Simulate. Okay, so here on the different options, just come down to Dynamic Simulate, and then click Solve. Okay, and then it's going to give me um, the solution at the, at the different points. I have, um, you know, X1 going to a value of 4.5, and then X2, uh, 55.8. Um, and then let's look at the solution results. You can also get it in this tabular format. Okay, and then you can see um, the trends here from the online interface. Okay, so that, um, that is the, uh, this example problem on how to convert, um, on how to convert uh, you know, this problem, these differential equations into algebraic equations and then use an algebraic solver to uh, solve these values and, uh, and then uh, report uh, the numerical solution of these uh, differential equations.